Eric Stromquist here at the Rock and Roll, I mean, the AHR show. I thought we were at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with my, days, with my friend Terry Swope here, who in addition to running a great company and founding a great company is also a pretty damn good guitar player. So, uh, But, dude, you're not singing the blues at Link Spring anymore. You guys have been busy doing a lot of cool stuff. Yes, we have, We've, and we're super excited to be here at this, this uh, AHR after all these years, yeah. Oh, it's great. Well, talk to me a little bit about you, know, you guys are evolving. People are talking about data and moving data around and so on and so forth. You guys kind of got a kind of a unique way to do it. Will you tell me about your E2E? Oh, absolutely. So today we're actually launching the E2E platform. We've been working on it for quite some time. But basically it, it uses the independent data layer connection that we've, we've been working with uh, uh, utility companies for over eight years. Uh, we've combined that with the ability of MQTT uh, designation on all the data in a building coming out of the Niagara framework or from a legacy system. It doesn't have to be the Niagara framework. And then um, tagging that and using all the metadata to serve that up to the cloud. The, the, the thing that we did and how we did it is we built it for our own company. We didn't try to build it for everybody under the sun. And our go-to market approach is a design-build approach. Work with our customer base, find out what the data is that they're looking for, and then give them the ability to manage and own their own data and then parse that data out to whatever application uh, that they want to use. The, the, really, the best thing about it is the dashboard. We're using some software that was developed within the, uh, um, uh, the industry, like Disney and, uh, and um, uh, what's the uh, cartoon guy's uh, subject? Is Adam, Adam. Yeah, anyways, it gives you the ability to have a, a white platen and then be able to drag the data in using widgets and see that data any way you want and then save that customer experience every time you're there. So let's say, Eric, you want to look at energy data on the consumption. You can, you can take a look at the, at the energy meters. Uh, if you've got somebody in your company that's looking at HVAC, environmental conditions, they can take a look at that. They can look at run times. All of it benign to the control system that's there and give their ability then to make decisions to go back on how they can perform on their building. Our roadmap is going to give you the ability to tunnel back to your control solution and make decisions in the cloud and then, and it's all cloud based, uh, and then be able to perform on your building the way you want. The That's really. Two, I'm sorry. No, I was just saying. No. I'm pretty excited today. Well, you should be, man. It sounds great. Go ahead. And, uh, and the launch of our, uh, of our Niagara based VAV control system, our IP based controls, and you can go over and take a look at that, and you should before you leave. We'll definitely do that. Uh, what, the, the thing about it is, is we met all ASHRAE standards, so it's all configurable and programmable to ASHRAE standards, to, regardless of the type of box that you got in place. And because of the way that we did it, and uh, we built it at the data layer, uh, the ability to field provision and make changes at midnight for an entire building, you can configure it, commission it, all with a spreadsheet. And I mean, the time savings and labor savings on this new device is incredible. Well, that sounds fantastic. Well, it sounds like, too, you know, owning your own information is a big thing. I know there's debates with some people about who owns the information. Well, by using your solution, you don't have to worry about Google or somebody coming in and saying, no, that's our information, right? Well, and we did a, a, a survey with customers many years ago, and we've updated it multiple times, and they always said, where's my data? And we went back to them and said, what do you mean, where's my data? Well, I worked with this application, and, and I don't want to work with them anymore, and the data's gone. I worked with this application. This gives them the ability. They're in complete command and control of their own data. If they don't want to work with us anymore, they don't have to, but they own that data, and then it can be uh, and, and anything that comes out of their uh, uh, the Niagara framework, the Baja files, their, their, their commissioning and everything can be stored in the cloud, and it's theirs to use however they want. It's fantastic. So you're launching it at the show. It's live. Is it is ready to go? Yeah. So if somebody wants to uh, to get on board and order right now, what's the best way for them to find out more? Well, obviously, contact us. And, the, and like I said, it's design build. So what we do is we have, we use a three part process: discovery, development, and deployment. And then discovery is we meet with you, no charge. What is it you want to see in your data? How do you want that parsed out? Where do you want to store that data? Then we go back into it, and, and because everything we build in it, it goes back into the ecosystem that everybody benefits going forward. Then we go through the development process for them, whatever that might be, that's unique to their business, and then finally we deploy that in there in software as a service. Very, very cool. Terry, this is so exciting. Well, I want to see this VAV controller you yeah. got, so you got somebody can show that to me? Absolutely. VAV, VAV is everywhere, man. How can you take a VAV controller and make it better? We're going to find out with my friend Vance Wheeler here from Link Spring. Vance, tell me about your new VAV, buddy. The, the new VAV, the, the, one of the great features that we have about this is we communicate to it via Ethernet. 
So we use a communication protocol called spanning tree, which allows us to actually take a loop, daisy chain the controls together, so we don't have to home run each one of them, relieving some of the network costs associated with it. We use a managed switch, and our communications are lightning fast. Uh, each one of our VAVs comes from the factory with the program in it, fully configurable, but it is truly backnet box network. So you uh, have high speed, live data communication coming out of each one of these VAVs. Uh, the VAVs have uh, ASHRAE G36, uh, which is a uh, VAV protocol to, for sequence of operations so that uh, every manufacturer, every installer, every engineer is working off of the same foundation on how to control a VAV. These are fully G36 compliant, plus we've added some features into it so that you can still customize them in case you need to do things above and beyond it. Not only are these VAV controllers, but we have the ability to communicate, uh, control auxiliary heat, fin tubes, radiant panels, and we also control exhaust fans. So you have four protocols, four uh, different uh, uh, sequence of operations for exhaust fans on how you want to control your exhaust fan. So it sounds like you just pull it out of the box, you plug it in, you're ready to go. Uh, we do have a, c a configuration tool to make your life a little easier. Uh, we've got a, a tool that you set up, very user friendly, easy to use, and you can configure multiple VAVs in a very short time frame. And, it, and the idea is that we can have uh, entry level technicians doing VAVs now. Uh, we also have a uh, a, uh, a, a tool to export all of your configuration parameters so you, you have a complete as built and we also have a commissioning tool. Now listen, everybody I talk to is having trouble finding qualified people. I think the fact that you could have an entry level technician commission these for you and set them up is a huge piece right there, right? Yeah, yes, it is. It, it frees up your upper level techs to go out and be working on your air hands, the custom programming that you need. Your entry-level techs can be in there learning how to do a VAV, and and when the commissioning tool comes back and says something is not quite right, you can help just on those few boxes, teach your guy, and then free, free yourself back up to go back and doing other work. Right, and with the speed of the network, you can send all this data up yep. to your E2E thing, and you're ready to go, right? Yeah, th this works extremely well with our E2E platform, so we're, we're very very happy to have both of them together. Uh, we're also happy to announce that uh, uh, soon uh, availability for our uh, companion sensor. So this this is our prototype. We're displaying it here for the first time, and we've had a lot of great feedback on our sensor. This is a really handsome sensor. Now let me ask you, did Mark Peacock design that? You know, because he used to hang out on Madison Avenue with all the supermodels back in the 80s. Mark, Mark had a lot of influence on this. He saw it for the first time today. He said, wow, great job, guys. And, and with that. Buddy, thanks, fans. Appreciate oh, it. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Have a great day.